Welcome to this week's episode of Thoroughly Entertained. Today, my sister and I are going to be talking about UFC 157, the Academy Awards. We're going to talk about who we think will win, and then we'll recap the show after it's over. Okay, so we watched UFC 157 last night, which featured the main event of Ronda Rousey versus Liz Carmouche. It was your first time seeing a UFC event. Kind of what were your thoughts? Um, I have to say, because I went in not knowing anything about UFC other than it's a mixed martial arts sort of fighting style, um, I was surprised at how entertaining I actually found it to be. I thought it was more more entertaining than boxing for sure. Like I, I don't like watching right. boxing yeah. at all. But this, because there's the combination, there's more versatility in what they can do, um, kept my interest a lot longer. And given the fact that each of the rounds seemed to be fairly short and succinct, and then they went on to another set of fighters. It it definitely kept my interest. I didn't think that I would enjoy watching three hours of mixed martial art fighting, but I found that the time went by really fast. Yeah, um, I made a few predictions for the main right. card. I, I predicted all five fights that were on the main card. Um, I got the last three fights correct. Uh, the first two I missed. I tried to pick an upset, and I missed on that one. <laughs> I thought Josh Neer might pull the upset in that fight, but I got that wrong. Um, but the fight that was the real surprise was the first fight on the pay-per-view card, which was Josh Koscheck versus Robbie Lawler. Both guys are veterans, have a lot of fights, but um, Robbie Lawler had kind of been trending down in his career, and a lot of people thought if he lost that fight, he might get cut. Right. And so me, along with the, major the vast majority of people, had predicted that Josh Koscheck would win that fight, and Lawler pulled a great upset, got a knockout in the first round, and kind of really shocked everybody, and kind of re-announced his presence in the UFC. So it was, it was an interesting night of fights. It was, it was. My favorite moment was... Um, though I actually had two. I mean, I enjoyed the, the title fight. I thought that Absolutely. was um, engaging and interesting, and I was scared that, you know, Ronda would lose yeah. you know, on that one one moment. Yeah, anyways, the, anyways, I thought it was fun. But anyways, the, the two moments I liked the best were, um, and I don't remember the guy's name, so the one where he, the guy was on the other guy's back, the guy from Southern California. Uriah Faber versus he, Ivan Menjavar. Yeah, when he was doing the whole, like, grrr, choking him around the neck and and the tap out on that one. And I also thought the surprise with the leg lock tap out, yeah. um, that that was an interesting move and completely unexpected in all ways. So. Yeah, the leg lock tap out, that actually got submission of the night and that guy won a bonus $50,000. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely, so it was big, especially for a fighter like him who fought, who fought earlier on the card and doesn't make as much money, that 50000 is a big, big uh, bonus check for him. Um, I thought the, the fact that it was the first women's fight in UFC right. history and that it was so entertaining, and there was real back and forth, but that the favored dominant champion ended up winning in her usual dominant style was the best possible outcome for the UFC. I think if, Roz, if Ronda Rousey would have went out there and completely dominated Liz Carmouche and embarrassed her, it wouldn't have been as good for the sport right. as having such a close and, and interesting fight was. The fact that Ronda Rousey was in danger and she survived, yeah. which was kind of the first time in her career that somebody had put her in a bad position and, right. and she'd overcome it. Um, the fact that Liz Carmouche and Rousey did so much press and were both, you know, interesting and engaging. Like, they sold the fight in, in an incredibly effective way. Um, this was the best possible outcome for the UFC. And the fact that probably over the next year, the most famous fighter in the UFC is going to be a woman, is going to be Ronda Rousey, is kind of amazing. Yeah, and I like the fact that these were, they were fierce but they didn't seem like mannish in any way. Yeah. Like sometimes, you know, some female, you know, athletes, they, yeah. they try to be like men, and I appreciated the fact that they weren't, but it was still an engaging fight. Sometimes women's sports cannot be entertaining, like women's yeah. basketball and stuff right. like that. They're not nearly at the same level, but these women felt they were strong and fierce, and I really enjoyed the match. Yeah, it was a really good night of fights. All right, so moving on to the Oscars. So we're doing this video in two parts for our viewers. We're going to yeah. talk now about our predictions about tonight, and then we'll check in later tonight and talk about what actually happened at the Oscars. So um, first off, we're just going to do the major categories. Okay. And Best Supporting Actress clearly will go to Anne Hathaway. She's Absolutely. been the darling, um, the one selected to win because of that, her 23 minutes in the movie, but it's really the, the unedited cut or that one take cut of her singing I Dreamed a Dream and you just see her racked as Fontaine and her life is completely not what she planned it to be and it was gripping and moving and she nailed that so I think she's gonna win. Yeah I have a hard time seeing anybody beating her for that. Right. Uh, my opinion I think Tommy Lee Jones is going to win for Best Supporting Actor. Um, he's been lauded all throughout award season for his performance. 
uh, as an abolitionist senator. And, you know, again, he's just a great actor who consistently delivers really good performances. And in a movie like this, which hinged on the acting, because it's very, it's, it's very intimate, it's mostly talking, right. you know, you had to have these kind of stand-up performances, and Tommy Lee Jones was a perfect representation of what worked yeah, in this Yeah, he was film. like a grizzly bear in that yeah. movie. Um, for Best Actress, we have chosen Jennifer Lawrence. Yes. Um, even though in the book, the the actress or the, the main female character is meant to be older, I know that David Russell, when he was casting it, just was really moved by the maturity and depth of Jennifer Lawrence. And she nails this very different and odd character and mm -hmm. dealing with mental illness and stuff like that. And she, she does a stellar performance. And she's been a consistently strong actress since she's come onto the scene. So Yeah, and I think this will kind of announce her going forward as maybe kind of one of the bright talents of this generation, kind of one of the people that you look at and go, every time she does something, it's going to be great. Whether it's commercial or yeah. a critically acclaimed movie, absolutely. And uh, to go along with that, kind of a stalwart in this category is Daniel Day-Lewis. I think he is going to win for, for Lincoln. Uh, anytime he does a performance now, he only does a movie every few years, and he's very selective about the films that he does, and he picks these kind of difficult challenges where he has to physically change himself or take on, you know, an interesting accent or, or he has to do something completely different. And, you know, the physical likeness, the physical resemblance to Abraham Lincoln was kind of remarkable yeah, at times. Yeah, it was fantastic. And nobody really acts, like from A to Z in a film, really embodies a character like Daniel Day-Lewis. And there's a reason he gets nominated every time. There's a reason why every time he's in something, he is amazing. Like, there's really kind of no comparison right. between him and any other living actor right now. His shuffling gait, the way he altered his voice. Yeah. Like, you you weren't seeing Daniel Day-Lewis on the screen. You thought that that was Lincoln. And that's that's what you need in a great actor, yeah. is that you don't think of them as the person that they are, but they really embody the character. And I don't know that anybody really does that full transformation any better than he does. Uh, like, Meryl Streep and him, basically... Male and female are kind of the two absolute standouts. Right. Now for Best Director, we have Steven Spielberg for Lincoln. Once again, this is a movie that has a lot, a large cast actually, and yeah. it's an intimate movie, and it felt real and immediate, and I thought that the acting choices were brilliant, um, but there were still moments of lightness as the lobbyists are trying to convince right. the members of the Congress to support. Um, Lincoln's position, and I thought Spielberg did an excellent job directing this particular movie. Yeah, very steady-handed. I mean, there were more flashy directing jobs this yes. year. I think, you know, the way Life of Pi was filmed was really interesting for Ang Lee, but, you know, somebody who consistently gets great work out of great actors is Steven Spielberg, and I think the big reward for this movie is going to be the director statuette, because uh, as we go to Best Picture, I think Argo is going to win right. for Best Picture, because I believe... Um, that is going to be Argo's reward since it's not going to get noticed in many of the other categories. Ben Affleck didn't get a director nomination. No I, actor yeah, nomination. No actor nomination. Right. So I think the, the reward for Argo is going to be Best Picture, whereas I think for Lincoln it's going to get the acting awards and I think it's going to get director. So it's between the two of them for Best Picture, but I think Argo's going to take it. I agree. Um, as a movie, I thought Argo was more suspenseful and, and scarier, and right. yet there was more moments of humor as they're trying to you know piece together this and then the stress of you know an action both of them were historical events right. one a little more more me immediate but argo was an excellent movie and i think it deserves to win best picture this year okay so those are our predictions and we'll come back uh later to see what happened all right see you all in a right. little bit okay all right well welcome back we just finished watching the oscars and we're going to tell you how it went so um as far as our predictions went um, we were spot on. Did pretty good. Yeah. yeah, we had two categories that were not on our will win list, but they were on our should win list. So yeah. I feel like for the most part we were right on track with who we thought were going to win and who actually did win. But our the two surprises of the night were on our should win list. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? Um, I was really surprised that Christoph Waltz won for Best Supporting Actor. I mean, this was a loaded category this yeah. year with De Niro and Tommy Lee Jones and Adam Arkin and Philip Seymour Hoffman. Like, this is probably the deepest category of any of the categories this year. And to have Christoph Waltz win was pretty astounding, especially after him recently winning for Inglorious Bastards. I did not see that coming at all. Well, and they even mentioned in the night, like, whoever was presenting that category, that 22 collective nominations in that... Yeah, amazing. You know, amazing so, depth. Yeah, I was surprised and happy, like, because he was yeah, really he was effective in, in that role. Chain, yeah. And then the other one is that Django Unchained won Best um, Original Screenplay, and this is Quentin Tarantino's first Academy Award, Good and much yeah. deserved as well. Um, my 
I, as a whole, enjoyed the production. I yeah, thought that it was, I liked the blend of music and how they kept that light. And I thought Seth MacFarlane played a good host. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was really funny, and one of the things I was worried about was that he would temper his sense of humor down, because he goes for the jugular a lot on, on Family Guy, and even in the movie Ted, and I was glad to see that he didn't pull any of his punches, that he was just as rough on people <laughs> as he always is. And then that's that's where his humor comes from, so I thought he did a really good job balancing that and kind of playing to the audience in front of him. And I thought the Ted and Mark Wahlberg, um, you know, uh, skit that... That was well, a good was, presenter skit, yeah. Yeah, like, I thought it was one of the funniest, you know, presenter skits of the night, so... Yeah. And uh, my favorite acceptance speech was Daniel Day-Lewis. I thought he was really funny, surprisingly so. Daniel Day-Lewis is uh, famously very serious yeah. uh, guy. And for him to make kind of the joke with Meryl Streep about how she was supposed to play Lincoln and he was supposed to play Margaret Thatcher the, uh, the year before, I thought was really funny and kind of unexpected. I liked that a lot. Yeah, I thought that was a clever moment. And, and it's fun to embed a little bit of humor. And, yeah. and he was definitely the foregone conclusion as, as winning for that category. My most touching moment of the night was Ben Affleck's speech. You know, the fact that he was not nominated for Best Director, yeah. everyone felt that he was robbed in that category, and so to get his redemption back for Best Movie, and it was it was a movie speech. I, I'm getting choked up just thinking about it, so... Yeah, and he has had a really unconventional career. He yeah. burst on the scene, you know, kind of got super famous really fast, um, wasn't really selective about the choices of movies that he did, and it really damaged his career, and he's kind of built himself back up as a director who also does, you know, a little bit of acting in his movies. He, he tends not to play the most glamorous or the flashy role in the movies that he does. And, you know, he's directed three movies, uh, Gone Baby Gone, The Town, and Argo, and all three were terrific, with this being the best of the bunch. Uh, you know, he seems like a really good guy who works really, really hard, and, you know, it, it seemed really satisfying to, to see him kind of have this redemption. And I think it'll only mean better things as he'll continue yeah. to, you know, get better as a filmmaker. And he's already spectacular. More and more confident. And right. yeah, it's, it's really cool. So I was overall really pleased with the, the Academy Awards this year. It was been a strong year for movies. And and everyone, you know, it wasn't like I thought that anyone deserved got an award that they didn't deserve or wasn't well earned. So Yeah, and I don't think this year uh, seemed like so much of the politicking was involved. I thought a lot of the performances that were nominated and a lot of the performances were won. Uh, were really the ones that shined the most. I mean, Anne Hathaway was absolutely heart-stopping right. in Les Miserables. And, you know, to see somebody like Jennifer Lawrence kind of become like this great actress right in front of our eyes, you know, kind of of our generation, She'll kind of, she seems like she might be the Meryl Streep of our generation. It's, it's exciting to see those types of things, and I really think, for the most part, the Oscars got it right this year, a, a lot of the way through. Right. All right. All right. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Thoroughly Entertained. If you liked what you saw, make sure to leave a comment or like us below. As always, check out our website at thoroughlyentertained.com. We'll see you next week.